Hey everybody, welcome back to Mode Bespoke. I'm Atenas. For today's tutorial, we're going to be crocheting a very festive reindeer tea towel. So this is part one of a two part tutorial because we are going to work line by line to complete this project. So it is going to be a lengthy project, but it's going to have a ton of information for you guys. So you will all be able to crochet this project in no time. So let's get started. So for materials, we are going to need two skeins in the red, and then I just used Bernat. It's a Bernat cotton yarn. I got this at Joann's here in the U.S., but if you don't live in the U.S., here's all the information, or if you can't find this yarn specifically. Um, it's 215 meters or 236 yards long, so I used two skeins, and this is what I had left. So I did have a little bit left, and for this kind of ivory-colored one, I went with a peaches and cream cotton yarn and this one you can find, I found this at Walmart, but you can find this anywhere. And I use one of the small skeins, so it's 120 yards or 109 meters and I only used one and that's how much I had left. Uh, make sure that you use a cotton yarn. So both of these yarns are 100% cotton, so you don't want to use a synthetic yarn in the kitchen because they can and probably will melt if you use um, or if you expose them to high heat. So don't use a synthetic yarn in the kitchen. Go with something that's 100% cotton. So that was that was my bit there. Other materials you're going to use are a G hook, and this is 4.25 millimeters. And you just need a pair of scissors, a yarn or tapestry needle, and you're also going to need the chart. So here's the chart we're going to be using for our tea towel. And let's just give it a quick review so we're all on the same page. So you can find this chart. It is an, an instant download PDF file. You can purchase this on the website. You can get just the chart by itself. And you also have the option to buy the full pattern. So the full pattern is a line by line written description of what all of these steps that we're going to be doing. If you just want the chart, you can just buy the chart by itself. So let's look at the numbers on our chart. So you're going to see on either side, you're going to see numbers starting from 1 to 78. This is the row number. So they're the same numbers on either side. You're also going to see numbers running along the bottom and the top of the chart. So this one goes from 1 to 53, and then this one starts with 1 on the left and then 53 on the right. So the way you read this chart is you start on the bottom right hand corner. So if you are right handed, so if you're left handed, give me a minute, we'll get there. But if you are right handed, you're going to start with stitch number one on row number one. And all of your odd numbered rows, you're going to read from right to left. So you'll read it like this. Even numbered rows go from left to right. So you're going to be reading your chart like this. Now if you're left handed, you're going to start on the bottom left hand side. So you're going to read from left to right on odd numbered rows and from right to yeah, did I say left to right? Yeah, now from right to left on your even numbered rows. So you're going to read the chart like this. So I have both numbers up here on the chart and on the bottom. So if you're left handed and you need to know what row you are on, you have a number guide right up here. So that way everybody can keep track of where we're at. But yes, you can crochet this whether you are right or left handed. The written instructions for this chart are written as right-handed, so I do number the the stitches um, one through fifty-three, and then when you go on the uh, on the even numbered, so all even numbered rows, I go from fifty-three down to one, just to keep it from being too confusing. So if you are left-handed and you need help with the written pattern, you can just shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to help. So it is in color. I just have a black and white printer, so all of this is in red, and then this is in white. So it is a color. Um, chart that you can you can purchase you can download it or you can print it so you're gonna see two different legends up here and that's because I do the Spanish tutorial and the English tuto tutorial so this bottom one is in Spanish this top one is in English but it is the exact same thing so for the purpose of the chart you're gonna see two different stitches so this whole top section is crocheted using a herringbone stitch this part with the pine tree and the reindeer is crocheted using a half double crochet. That will make all of these, all of the stitching a lot neater. So you'll be able to see the design. So that's why it's not entirely crocheted 
in herringbone stitch. So if you look at the legend, let me try to fold this so you can see it. You're going to see these open stitches. So you'll see this one, the herringbone stitch, and then this other one that is also a herringbone stitch. So you have the two colors we're going to be using today. And then you're going to see these that have the little dot on the inside, and these are half double crochet stitches. So you will see those down here. So as you can see, the reindeer in all this section has that little dot on the inside. So this is all half double crochet. If you have no idea what these stitches are, don't worry, we are going to I will show you how to crochet them since we're going to cover the the whole tea towel so we're going to break this up in sections just to not make it an incredibly lengthy tutorial so if you notice there are a couple of parts that are all repeated so this is the same as this which is the same as this so i will teach you how to crochet this bottom part and all you need to do is just repeat the video to watch how to crochet these but by the time you're done with this one you should know how to crochet this without needing additional help we also have two reindeer and two pine trees. So I'm going to crochet this part with you. So up until this last stitch of the pine tree. So I'll crochet this section with you. So we'll go row by row. And then you will complete this part on your own. So I'll complete this part off camera just to make it a little bit quicker. Um, so you have a shorter tutorial. So it will end right here on this stitch, the end of the pine tree. And you do have another row so it will look exactly like this. So when you do your repeat, you're just going to start on this first column, on whatever stitch number. Okay, so you're gonna start at this column on the row that we are currently working on. So stitch number one on whatever row, and then go all the way through. That way when you repeat it, it will, it will look exactly like this. The only thing you'll have to do additional is going to be one extra stitch at the end of the row when you are done with the stitching. So the very end of it all, you're going to have to do an additional stitch. So the first row we're going to begin with is a row of herringbone stitches, and they're going to be in red. So it's one row of herringbone stitches in red. And if you look at the chart, you're going to start with, you have 53 stitches. So here's one, here's 53. So we're going to have to chain 53 stitches. So we'll start with a slip knot. So I'll leave a nice long tail end of yarn and then you're going to wrap the yarn around two fingers insert your hook into this loop and you're going to grab this yarn back here and pull it through the loop and then you just pull your fingers out and tighten your slip knot so you tighten this little area by pulling on the two threads individually so we need to make a chain of 53 stitches if you don't know how to make a chain you're going to yarn over, so you wrap the yarn around your hook, and you're going to pull this top loop through the bottom loop. So yarn over and pull the top loop through the bottom loop. Yarn over, top loop through the bottom loop. And there you go. So we have three chains. So this little knot, it might be easier if you just tighten it so you don't have to see it. But there's one two, three. Make a chain of 53 stitches and then we'll start with our herringbone stitch. I'm just going to make it this small sample because I have a bigger one up already completed. So we're going to do just a small sample so I can teach you how to do that first row and then we're going to move on to our color switch. So to start row number one you're going to have to chain one more. So you have your chain of 53 stitches and you're going to do 54. So there's one more chain. We're going to skip this one and we're going to start on the second stitch. So to make a herringbone stitch, you're going to yarn over. You're going to insert your hook into that second stitch from the hook. Yarn over and pull out your hook. So you'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to pass this first loop through this middle loop. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through the two remaining loops on your hook. So that's a herringbone stitch. So let's do another one in this next stitch. You're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then you're going to pull this first loop through this middle loop. 
and then you yarn over and pull through the two remaining loops. We'll do it one last time together. So you yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and you're going to pull up a loop. And you're going to pull the first loop through the middle loop, and then you yarn over and pull through the two remaining loops on your hook. So that's how you're going to crochet the herringbone stitch. Continue to crochet one in every stitch of your chain until you have 53 herringbone stitches. And then we're going to do our color switch for row number two, which we're going to crochet in that ivory color. So once you've reached the end of the row, I'm on my second to last stitch. So here's that last stitch of the row. We're going to have to work a color switch. So this is going to be our first color switch because we're going to practice carrying yarn. So if you've never carried yarn, you're going to have to carry yarn throughout this entire section. So everything, this row right here, all of this stuff with the pine trees, and this area right here. You're going to have to carry yarn so you have both threads of yarn, so when you're using two colors, so you have both of them accessible, so all you do is switch, and you can do quick color switches like this without having to weave in so many ends. So we're going to start practicing it now so that by the time we get to this section, you're really comfortable carrying yarn. So for, the, for our color switch, we're going to be, do this last stitch of the row. We're going to start it as a herringbone stitch, and we're going to finish it in a second color. So we'll start with our yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then you pull your first loop through this middle loop until you reach this point. So once you have the two loops left on your hook, this is where we're going to do our color switch. You're going to grab your ivory yarn or your second color, leave a bit of a tail, which we will weave in later. You're just going to loop it around your hook and you're going to pull this white loop or the ivory loop through the red loops. So you'll close that herringbone stitch in the ivory color. So there we go. So we're ready to move on to the second row and you're going to begin every row with a chain one. So it doesn't matter if you're working a half double crochet or a herringbone stitch, you're always going to start your row with a chain one. So we're going to chain one, we're going to turn our work around, and this is where we're going to start carrying yarn. So we're going to begin in this very first stitch. So our first herringbone stitch of the row will be in that stitch right here. And we're going to have to carry our red yarn. So let's pull these out of the way. So when you carry yarn, you use two colors and you want to hide the color you are not using within the stitching of the color that you are. So in this case, we want to hide the red yarn beneath the ivory yarn so that we have both threads right next to each other and we have easy access to either of the threads so we can quickly switch colors. So to do this, you're just going to lay the color you're not using. So we're going to lay the red yarn above our stitches. So see it's just laying right on top. And then we'll begin our first stitch. So you're going to work just another row of herringbone stitches. So if you're more advanced, just carry your yarn. You're going to do one herringbone stitch for every stitch of the row until you get to the last stitch and then you do another color switch. Because num row number three and row number four are worked in herringbone stitches in red. So for everybody else who doesn't know how to do this, let's do this together. And we're going to start with our herringbone stitch with a yarn over. You're going to insert your hook into that first stitch of the row. Yarn over pull up a loop, and then you pull that first loop through the middle loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. That's just your herringbone stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch and make a herringbone stitch. So if you do need to review the stitch, go back to the beginning of the tutorial and just practice a little bit. So the whole time you are crocheting a herringbone stitch, you're going to be carrying the red yarn. So it's just going to lay flat on top of my work. So for these few rows, just practice carrying the yarn, the color that you're not using so that you're really comfortable with it by the time that we get to the reindeer in the pine tree section.
So I'll do another stitch and show you what it looks like so far. So this is what it looks like in the front and here's in the back. So we're hiding our red yarn right here, right below our, red, our ivory stitches. As you can see, it's right here. So there are no loops hanging out. There's no loose yarn anywhere. Just our two little tail ends that, we'll weave, that we will weave in later. But that's how you carry yarn. So continue to crochet a half double, or not a half double, a herringbone stitch. Continue to crochet a herringbone stitch in every stitch of the row. And then on that last stitch, we're going to do another color switch so that we can complete rows three and four in red. So let me finish crocheting these and I'll see you again in a moment. So once you're at the end of the row on your second to last stitch, we have to do another color switch. So this time we have to switch to red. So we're going to start our herringbone stitch. And once we get to this point, so once you get to the two loops, we're going to drop the ivory yarn and pick up the red yarn. And then you just yarn over and pull through the two ivory loops and you have switched colors. Now the next two rows, so row number three and four, are both red herringbone stitches. So if you're advanced, just crochet two rows. I'm going to be carrying my white yarn or the ivory yarn. You can choose to cut it if you want to and then just work the two rows and pick it up again on row number five or you can carry it. That's up to you. But for those of you who are more new to crochet and want to do this together, let's take a look at this. So if you move your red yarn, it's easier to see the stitch. So your first stitch of the row is this one right here. So right where our color switch was, that is our first stitch of the row. So you're going to you have to carry your ivory yarn for the rest of the row, much like you did the red yarn in the previous row. So you're going to grab your ivory yarn, make sure that you go around that first stitch so you can see it, and then just hold down your yarn. And then you're ready to start your herringbone stitch. So you just yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch of the row, and complete a herringbone stitch. So for me, usually my first stitch of the row is a little tight, so it takes me just a moment to crochet that first herringbone stitch. If you don't want to have that problem, just loosen up your stitching and work with a really loose tension. So just pull up on your, on your stitches as you're crocheting and you'll have looser and easier stitches to work into. So you just crochet the rest of the row using the herringbone stitch and make sure that you are paying attention to your ivory thread so that you're pulling it over the stitching so over your fur the future stitches so that you have it hidden. So I'll crochet a few more here, do maybe two or three, so that you can see what it looks like after you have been carrying yarn for a few more a few stitches. So here we go. So here's the front side. When you turn it around, that's what it's gonna look like. So you have your ivory yarn hidden in between your stitching. So every couple of stitches, just take a look at it, give it a little tug. Don't pull on it too tight because then you'll, you'll bunch up your work. So just give it a little tug. Make sure that it's, it isn't really loose because then it'll poke out between your red stitches and then it will be noticeable. So just continue crocheting a herringbone stitch in every stitch of the row. And then for those of you that are experienced, do one more row. So chain one and do one more row of herringbone stitches. For those of you that need to see um, how we're going to add, how we're going to move on to the next row and continue carrying our yarn, just stick around for a moment. So once you get to your second to last stitch on row number three, we're going to begin row number four. But if you notice, row number four doesn't need a color switch since you're going to be crocheting a herringbone stitch in red for every stitch of the row. So when you have rows like that, because you'll see this again, row seven, eight, and then 10 and 11, we're going to handle it like this. So you just crochet your herringbone stitch on this very last stitch, chain one to begin your next row, and then turn your work around. You're going to grab the yarn that you're going to carry. You're just going to loop it this way. Make sure that you 
get it around that first stitch so that you don't miss your very first stitch of the row. And then you just begin your herringbone stitch. So starting on that very first stitch of the row, remember to hold your yarn down. So this ivory yarn, just hold it down so that you can hide it as you go. And that way you're gonna carry it throughout the whole row. So I'll do a couple of stitches here to show you in case you are a little worried about the color switches, let me show you what this is going to look like. So if you see all of these little color switches on the edges of our rows, don't worry about those. We are going to be making a border once we are done crocheting our tea towel and you won't see all of these edges will be nice any and you won't see any of these color switches that we're doing here on the sides. So don't stress out about those. Those will be gone by the end of the project. So you can go ahead and just switch colors comfortably without uh, without having to worry about it. So continue crocheting your herringbone stitch, uh, one in every stitch of the row throughout the rest of the row. And I will see you again here at the end because we're going to have to do another color switch. So whether you start on the left-handed side or the right-handed side, you are going to um, have to begin your first stitch with a an ivory color stitch. So do a color switch on that very last stitch of the row and then we'll begin row five together. So now that we've reached the end of our row, we finished on a color switch and we've started with our chain one. We're ready to move on to row number five. So now if we take a look at our chart, the first stitch is a half double crochet in ivory. So it's the same whether you're crocheting with your right or your left hand. So the first stitch is going to be in white. So you're going to alternate stitches. So you're going to do white, red, white, red throughout the entire row. You're going to do the same thing for row number six, only you're going to invert the colors. So you'll start with red, white, red, white, and so forth until you complete the row. You're going to get a lot of practice switching colors, which is great because you're going to need it for this section up here. So get really comfortable with it. We're going to do this in the half double crochet. Again, the stitch you will need up here. So let's do this nice and slowly. For those of you that know how to crochet half double crochets, just do your color switch at the end of the stitch um, when you have your three loops already on your hook. If you don't know what I mean, let's work on it together. So let me get a little bit closer. We have to carry yarn throughout the entire project or throughout this entire row, I should say. Um, so for this row, you're gonna carry the yarn that you're not using. So every other stitch is gonna be a different color. Our first stitch is gonna be in red. So place your red yarn to carry it. And we're gonna start our first half double crochet in that very first stitch of the row. So it, it, it's very similar to the herringbone stitch. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, and then you yarn over and pull up a loop. Now here's where it's different. So in a half double crochet, you have three loops on your hook, then you yarn over and pull through all three loops, and that's it. To do a color switch, you're gonna pull down your ivory yarn, so pull it towards the back, pull up your red yarn, and then you're gonna yarn over in red and pull through all three loops. And now you have to carry the white yarn. So pull on it, make sure that your stitch is nice and tight, and then lay it flat and repeat with the red yarn. So in the next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop so that you have three loops on your hook. And now with the red yarn, I'm going to pull it forward. Grab your ivory yarn and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. go pull on the red yarn and now we're going to carry the red yarn and crochet with the ivory yarn so yarn over insert your hook into the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop now we have all three loops in ivory we're going to drop the ivory yarn pull up the red yarn yarn over and pull through all three loops tighten that up and move on to the next stitch Yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, and notice that I am carrying the ivory yarn. Yarn over and pull up a loop. 
you're going to pull the red yarn forward and then just yarn over and pull through all three loops in the ivory. So as you can see, you're going to have a, an ivory stitch, red, ivory, red, which is what we need for row number five. So continue crocheting your half double crochets alternating colors until you get to the end of the row. So if you're wondering why I'm pulling the red yarn forward and the ivory yarn, I'm just dropping it when I am doing the exact same stitch, it is to avoid getting your yarn tangled. You can just drop your yarn if you want to, but as you work, you're going to start twisting your yarn. So by the end of the row, you'll have it twisted up like this. So in order to avoid that, we pull one yarn forward and then, so you pull it to the front and then you drop the other yarn. So it doesn't matter what yarn you do that with. I mean, you can also pull the white yarn forward and drop the red yarn. It doesn't matter. But by keeping one yarn in front and one in the back, you avoid them getting twisted up. So whatever you do on this row, so if in this row you're going to drop your white yarn and pull your red yarn forward, you're going to do the opposite in the next row since it is just a repeat. You're going to do the same thing up here. So one row you'll drop the white, pull the red forward, and the next one you will drop the red and pull the white forward. And that way it keeps your yarn from being tangled. So continue the rest of the stitch. I'll show you how to start row number six and then you're going to complete it in the same way that we're doing this row. So let me get that finished and then we'll come back and work on the rest of it together. All right, so we have reached the second to last stitch of row number five and we're ready to move on to this last stitch. Now, if we pay attention here to our chart, we're going to notice that the first stitch in row number six is in red. So make sure you make your color switch, your chain one in red, and then you're ready to begin in red. Row number six, you're going to crochet similar to row number five, only your colors are inverted. So let's do this color switch and then we will begin the next row. And I will um, help you complete the, the remaining rows before we get into the reindeer. So I'll explain to you how to complete this bit in just a moment. So for our last color switch that we're going to do together, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, and then we are yarning over and pull up a loop. Sorry, now we drop our ivory yarn, pick up the red, close up our half double crochet, chain one, and we are ready to begin our next row. So line up your ivory yarn and begin your very first half double crochet of row number six in red. And then pull the red forward and switch color to ivory. So this color, or this row, sorry, our colors are inverted. So if the, row, the stitch in the previous row was red, you're going to crochet an ivory stitch. If the stitch is ivory, you're going to crochet in red so that you have this little checkered effect. So complete row number six, same way you completed row number five. So a color switch in every, co in every single stitch of the row. When you get to the last stitch of the row, you don't need to do a color switch because you're going into row number seven, which is a row of um, herringbone stitches in red. So here's where I'm going to leave you guys to complete this pattern until this point. So we'll pick up together here again. So complete row number six, which is a repetition of row five, only inverted colors. Now row seven and row eight are a repetition of rows three and four. So it's herringbone stitch red for two rows. Row number nine is a repetition of row number two. So it's a herringbone stitch in ivory. And then we have 10 and 11, which is just a repetition of three and four again. So the next few rows are going to be completed in herringbone stitch. So complete row number six, half double crochet, row seven, through 11 are in herringbone stitch. And then I'll meet you again in the first stitch of row 12 so that we can begin this, the reindeer and pine tree pattern together. So complete all of these rows. I'll see you again in a moment. So once you have finished with your first 11 rows of your work, it's going to look like this. We're ready to begin row number 12, which is the very first row of our half double crochets where we begin the reindeer and the tree design. So if you remember when I told you at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna be working on half of the part, uh, half of this part with you. 
because the second part is just a repetition. So we're gonna work the, uh, this part together and then all you have to do is just repeat to complete the rest of your work. So the only difference between this section and this section is that you have one additional stitch. So either at the end or the beginning of a row. So depending on whether you're an odd numbered row or an even numbered row, you will have a stitch either at the end or the beginning of the row. So don't forget this last row of stitching when you complete your repetition of the part that we're going to be working on together. So I'm going to fold this in half just to make it a little easier. All right, so to start row number 12, and like how we begin all of our rows, we're going to begin with a chain one. So here we put this here. So chain one, turn your work around. Get all of our thread out of the way here so we can all see. As you can see, the first stitch is in red. So we're going to work first stitch and then two in ivory. So we will have to make a color switch stitch since there's only one red stitch. These are all in half double crochets. So we will begin our first half double crochet on the very first stitch of the row. And since it is a color switch, we're just going to switch to the ivory to close the stitch. Now we have two stitches in ivory. So we're going to do one. And then the second one is a color switch. So we'll switch to red. And then we have from stitch number four to stitch number, what is it, 11. These are all in red. So we will do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Stitch number eleven is a color switch. So if you have the written pattern, so the full written pattern, you're going to see this stitch listed as, I think it's HBS, so it's the um, half double color switch uh, abbreviation. So that's the one I chose with, but that's, the, that's something you're only going to see in the written pattern. So if you're looking at just the chart, just remember that the stitch before you change color is always going to be your color switch stitch, okay? So stitch number 12 is in white. So we're going to do one stitch in white and we will have to color switch. So then from stitch number 13 to stitch number 19, we have to work in red. It's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So make sure that before you do your color switch, just check the back of your work. You can see you can see the white poking through. So just make sure you tug on that ivory yarn a little bit just to hide it so it's not poking through your stitching. And then you can close the stitch. Once you've done the color switch, it is really difficult to pull that yarn through. So make sure you do your color switch before. That way you can um, you don't have all those little different colors poking out. All right, let's get our yarn ready. So now we have three stitches in red. So we're going to do, I'm sorry, in red, in ivory. This is ivory. So it's one, two, and then that last stitch is a color switch. There we go. And then we have stitch, what is this, number 23? I gotta pull this up so I can see it. So 23 to 26 is in red. So we have 23, 
24, 25, and then 26. And there we go. So that is the beginning of the first row. All you have to do is complete a repetition of what we just did. So one red stitch and then the reindeer, all of this red stitching all the way across. And at the end of the row, don't forget that very last stitch. So stitch number 53 is going to go in red. You do not have to do a color switch for row number 13. So just keep your yarn in red and then we will meet again here at the beginning of row 13. So once you have finished your row, we're ready to begin row number 13. And for row number 13, if you're a right-handed crocheter, you're now going to read your chart from left to right. If you are a left-handed crocheter, you're going to read it from right to left. So we don't have to count stitches anymore, um, unless you want to, because now we have a guide. So these three stitches is the base of our tree. Here is the front foot of our reindeer. And then these two stitches are the back foot. So now that we have a guide, the rest of the work is going to come along a lot quicker. So let's begin with that. So you've done your chain one, and now you have to read your chart the other way. So we have to work all of these first stitches in red until we get to the three stitches of the tree. So just grab my yarn and we're going to start crocheting in red and these are all half double crochet stitches remember to carry your ivory yarn or the white yarn and right before you get to the stitches of the tree you have to do your color switch so do it in the stitch before so we'll do our half double crochet pick up our ivory yarn and then we're going to do our color switch I'll put this right there so you can see it. And now we have our three ivory stitches. This last one is our color switch. And now for the reindeer, if you can remember that you're going to be moving your stitch, so adding one in front of the stitch that you have here, so we're going to be stitching here, which means your color stitch has to be two stitches before the white stitch. If that's a little confusing, just count the stitches. So row number 13, count from here to your first white stitch, and you'll know where to do your color switch. So we'll just set this up. And we'll just crochet through. So here we are, two stitches before the, um, the, uh, the ivory stitch that we need to crochet. So we're going to do a color switch. So now we can do our ivory stitch. And this is going to be a color switch. Yarn forward, do your color switch. And then we just continue crocheting in red until we get to the back legs of the reindeer. So let me pull my work around and get my yarn up here in the front. So the stitch right before this back leg, we have to do our color switch. So switch to ivory. And then if you notice on the chart, we only have one stitch in ivory and then the last two are in red. So color switch. And that'll bring us to these last two stitches. We have one and then two. There. 
So there we go. So I did mine at the end of the row with you guys. You will still need to make another repetition. So you're going to be right here on this stitch. So you'll be right around here. So you'll just have to start the row over again. So look for the next little tree. So the second tree on the row, complete that, and then just work another repetition of row number 13. So once you get that done, we'll move on to row number 14. So once you're ready for row number 14, we're gonna start the row with two red stitches, and then we have two white, and then we have all this section between the reindeer's legs. So let's begin with our first two red stitches. So remember to chain one and then turn your work around. So we're gonna start with one, two, and on that second one is your color switch. And now we have two stitches in ivory. So we have one and then two. That second one has to be a color switch. So now we go back to red. Now we just have to do all the stitches that are in between the reindeer's front legs and the hind legs. So try to work through these a little quick. Just can't move as quickly with cotton yarn. I don't know if you have that problem too, but it just doesn't slide as easily. Okay, so here we go. So the stitch right before the front leg, you have to do your color switch. I to work, move my work, not the chart. Go, and now here's that top part of the leg. Now we have to switch to white, I'm sorry, to red. We're on ivory, now we have to switch to red. So here's our color switch. And now, the pine tree. So we have two stitches between the front leg of our reindeer and the tree. So for the tree, you have four stitches and then you have the trunk so that has three stitches then four stitches at the end so it's a total of 11 stitches in ivory so let's do our two red we've got a little more yarn here so we do one two in red switch to ivory and then we have four, so it's one, two, three, four, and then it's the three stitches of the trunk. So one, two, three, and then the four stitches at the end of the tree. So one, two, three and on this last stitch you have to do your color switch so switch back to red because if you open up your pattern you're going to notice that the stitch right next to it we can start with another repetition all right so the stitch right next to that white stitch is going to be right here so we need two red stitches and then we repeat again so another reindeer another tree and then that last stitch of the row, which is the one I'm doing right now, is just a red stitch. So go through, work your second repetition of the pattern, and then your work will look like this. So repeat it one more time. I'll see you when you're ready to begin row number 15. Bueno, ya que terminamos la fila número 14, hay que comenzar con la fila 15. Ahora, al ser una fila impar, tenemos que comenzar a leer el diseño. Va a ser de izquierda a derecha. Si nos fijamos aquí al principio, tenemos que empezar aquí en el pino y vamos a tener, a tener que empezar perdón, con tres puntos y luego ya le vamos a quitar dos puntos a ambos lados de la rama aquí del árbol para hacerlo un poquito más pequeña. Ahora, en cuanto al reno, aquí no pasa nada en la primera en la pierna de adelante y en la de atrás le tenemos que agregar otros dos puntos y recorrerlos hacia la izquierda. Entonces vamos a hacer eso. Aquí voy a dejar, mira el diseño para que lo alcancen a ver. 
en lo que tejemos. Así que como siempre vas a comenzar con un punto cadena. Entonces ya empecé con la cadena. Aquí me acerco. Vamos a voltear el trabajo y comenzamos con nuestros primer puntos. Los primeros tres puntos, como vimos ahorita en la gráfica, son puntos en rojo. Y estos, acuérdense que son medios puntos altos. Así que vamos con uno, dos, y en el tercero va un cambio de color. Entonces cambiamos aquí al color este crema, al color beige. Y luego tenemos que hacer todas las los puntos para la rama del árbol así que nos regresamos aquí al tejido y vamos a tejer unos cuantos puntos en beige si necesitas saber qué tantos puntos exactamente nomás fíjate en tu gráfica y ve contando los puntos yo aquí nomás voy a usar el diseño como guía y sabemos que a ambos lados le tenemos que quitar dos puntos al árbol entonces me voy aquí hasta llegar Aquí a que me queden tres puntos, porque tengo que dejar dos puntos en rojo. Entonces aquí en este tenemos que hacer nuestro cambio de color. Así que en el tercer punto de la orilla va el cambio de color a rojo. Y luego le continuamos con los dos puntos que nos quedan. Entonces va uno y dos. Y aquí ya completamos la segunda rama del árbol ahora hay que continuarle con el reno y como dijimos en la patita de enfrente no tenemos que hacerle cambios así que nomás hacemos otros dos puntos aquí en rojo hasta llegar al punto de la piernita que es este blanco que cambiamos de color al blanco pero este como es solo un punto hacemos otro cambio de color Y continuamos. Y ahora, si necesitas contar los puntos para saber hacia qué lado recorremos la pierna, entonces fíjate en tu gráfica, cuenta tus puntos y ya te, te va a quedar bien tu cambio de color. Si lo estás haciendo nomás fijándote aquí en el diseño, aquí ya no, me falta un punto más, porque acuérdense que tenemos que recorrer el, la piernita un punto. En la gráfica es un punto hacia la izquierda. Pero como nosotros estamos trabajando ahora en la otra dirección, hay que recorrer aquí la piernita un punto más hacia adentro. Entonces aquí está la patita de enfrente del reno, este va a ser el cuerpo, o sea que tenemos que recorrernos a este lado hacia la derecha. Entonces ya hice, mira, mi cambio de color, aquí está mi punto rojo, que es, es perdón, donde vamos a recorrer el punto, como son dos puntos de la pierna, Tejemos nuestros dos puntos y luego tejemos el cambio de color. Y ahora sí, continuamos hasta llegar aquí a estos dos puntos. Y luego ya, llega, ya llegas perdón, otra vez al árbol y vas a repetir lo mismo que hicimos en esta parte de enfrente. Entonces ya nomás vuelves a repetir. Aquí te queda tres puntos. Mira, porque es uno, dos tres y luego ya en blanco luego ya tus últimos dos puntos entonces en el tercer punto de la orilla cambias de color y luego otra vez repites el reno entonces hagan su segunda repetición y ahorita nos volvemos a ver All right, so we're moving on to row number 15 so if we take a look here at our chart it is an odd numbered row so we're going to be reading the chart from left to right if you're not quite sure what direction you're reading it in just take a look at your pattern so once you get to the end of the row you know you have to chain one and then turn your work around Just look whether you are beginning on a tree or the reindeer, and then you'll know what side of the chart to start on. So we're going to be starting on this side. We need to begin with three red half double crochets, and then we're going to decrease either side of our tree by two stitches. So we keep going on here on the leg, the front leg of the reindeer. We're not doing anything. And this hind leg, we're moving the leg two point one point over sorry it is a total of two half double crochets we're going to move it one over toward the inside of the body and then we just repeat on the other side so it will look like this once you're through 
Sorry, I'll adjust the lighting here in just a second. So we're going to get started on this side. There we go. All right, so first thing is we have to start with three red stitches. So you're going to be starting here at the beginning of the row. So just make sure you chain one, turn your work around, and you will be right here. So we're going to start with the three stitches. So you have one at the very end, which is the very first stitch of the row, which is going to be um, stitch 53, and then 52 and 51 are in red. So we're going to do one, two, and then three. This is the last red stitch, so we have to do our color switch. And now we're just going to finish this branch of the tree. We're going to decrease two on the other side as well. So we're going to change two of those last stitches um, to red stitches. So I'm just going to crochet a few here and check where we are at. Uh, here we go. This is the last. Okay. So we have three stitches left on our tree. We have to change these two into red. So this one is going to be our color switch. So three stitches on this very first one you do your color switch and then these last two are in red. Like so. Switch to red and now we do our two red stitches to finish the row. There we go. So now for the reindeer we said that nothing happens on this very front leg. So we're just going to keep crocheting like we have in the um, past few rows. So we got one, two red, and that second one is a color switch. The leg is only one ivory stitch, so we're just going to stitch that. That is a color switch. And then we're going to do a few red stitches here, and since this is the uh, body of the reindeer or it will be here soon. So this is the inside part. We just have to pay attention to where the leg begins because we have to move our stitching one towards the inside. So if just looking at the pattern um, that you can't figure out where to move your stitch to, look at the chart. It makes it a lot easier for you. So if you need to count the stitches, go ahead and take a look at your chart. Otherwise, we're here already at the hind leg, we need to move our stitch over one toward the inside. So we're going to move it one to the right, which means this stitch is our color switch. So we're doing red, switching to ivory, and then we do two ivory stitches. So one, two, color switch, and then we have three stitches in red. So one, two, three. There we go. And you are ready to repeat. So just go through, repeat the pattern one more time so you get your entire row and it'll look like this. So you'll have your tree, which you've already decreased, reindeer, other tree, and your other reindeer. So let's move on to our next row. Okay, so we are now ready for row number 16. So this is what row number 16 will look like once you have completed it. So this is that first um, part of the, of the row. We're going to work the repetition here together. So I switched the background color, so hopefully you can see these stitches a little bit better. Uh, let's take a look at our chart then. So for row 16, we need to do three stitches in red, seven stitches in ivory for the body, two red, nothing changes on the front leg, and on the tree we are changing, a, we're going to remove a white stitch on either side, so we're going to switch it to red, but it's only going to be one stitch, so let's get started with that. So make sure you um, chain one, turn your work around, and you're ready to begin. So with the reindeer we needed three stitches in the front, I already did an extra one by accident, so I'm ahead, but I'm ahead of you guys by one stitch. But you need three stitches to begin with. 
until you get to the leg of the reindeer. So we're here at the hind leg, so we need to switch color. And we need to do seven stitches in ivory. So we have one, two, ah, uh, my yarn is stuck. There we go. Three, four, five. and seven. So stitch number seven is your color switch. Go. Now we're gonna have two stitches in red. So see, I didn't pull my yarn in the previous row, so there's a little bump here. But I'll move it around, um, especially after you wash it. Your uh, stitches loosen up, and then you can continue to move your stitches around to hide that. Anyway, we have two red stitches. So we have one, two, and then we have to do our color switch. So stitch number two is a color switch. We have one stitch for the front of the reindeer leg. And then we get to the tree. If working this section, you're a little more comfortable counting how many red stitches you need, go ahead and do that. I'm just using the uh, crochet as the guide, so the design itself makes it easy for you to just see where you're going. So we have, here's the tree, so here's the first white stitch. We know we have to turn this into a red stitch, so we're going to do our color switch here on this stitch. The rest of this branch is in white or in ivory. There we go. And then we know we need to do a color switch on the last stitch. So this very last stitch of the branch is going to have to be in red, which means the second to last stitch is our color switch. So we yarn over, here we go, color switch here, which makes this last stitch red, and then we just finish our row. So you should have three stitches at the end of the row. So just run your repetition so that you have your entire row. Open up your chart and then it'll be easy to see where you are at. Go ahead and repeat that. I'll see you again for row number 17. Okay, so here is row number 17, what it's going to look like. We are now making the body of the reindeer. We're going to be connecting it. So let's take a look here at our chart. We're going to connect this entire row. So the hind legs are now connected here in the middle of the body of the reindeer. We're going to move on to our... Uh, pine tree so we have to add two stitches on either side to make this branch wider so two on either side let's get started so remember to chain one turn your work around and we have to add two stitches to our tree so here's the tree we need to add two more stitches so I'm going to put my finger right here which means I have to chain or I have to crochet another stitch on this side for you since you just you're beginning the row you're going to start with two stitches so you're going to do two stitches in red and then you begin your white stitch so crochet your two um, white ivory whatever you want to call it stitches and then we do oh, I didn't do that as a color switch remember to do a color switch on that last red stitch So now we're ready for the two additional stitches for our tree branch. So there's one, two, and then you crochet all the rest of the stitches of the branch. So here I've got one more. Pull on that a little, just to make sure that I don't have any loops on my red yarn. So here we're at the end of the branch. We need to add two additional stitches in ivory. So we have one 
and then our color switch is on that second stitch. And then we just keep crocheting in red until we reach the front leg of the reindeer. So that's three red stitches. Your color switch is on that third stitch. And now we're at that front leg of the reindeer. So from here to here, we're gonna crochet in ivory. trying to crochet these as quickly as I can but like I've said I think a few times now cotton doesn't really glide that easily so it's not as fast to work up as a synthetic yarn that just kind of slides between your fingers this one doesn't really slide that well all right so that last stitch of the body of the reindeer is our color switch like that and then we just have our remaining three stitches to finish the row. So remember that you still have a repetition, so just keep working until you get to that tree. Remember that you have to add two stitches on either side, so it's gonna be two ivory stitches on either side of your tree to make that branch whiter. But once you've completed that first section, just go ahead and repeat the second one. And that's what your row will look like. Okay, so here's our preview row 18, and as you can see, we're just making the body of the reindeer a little bit high, a little bit higher, and now we want the leg to kind of pop out to make it look like the reindeer is jumping. So let's take a look here at our chart. Nothing changes here in the back, so we're on number 18. We still have three red stitches. We have the body of the reindeer, but we're losing two white stitches. We're gonna turn those into red stitches to create the little leg kind of bending over this way. If we look at our tree, we're gonna lose one stitch on either side. So we're gonna turn one stitch into a red stitch here on either side, just to make our branch a little narrower. So let's get started with that. Remember to yarn over, chain one, and turn your work around. And we said we start with three stitches. So begin the first three stitches until you get to the body of the reindeer. I only have two, two stitches left here before I'm at the body, but I'm already in the middle of the project, so I'm going to do my red stitches. We get to the body of the reindeer, and we switch color. So now the next few stitches are all in ivory. So once you have three stitches left here on the body of the reindeer, let me move my yarn. We need to turn two of these stitches into red stitches. So these two at the end. So that means that this third stitch is going to be our color switch. So we've got one ivory stitch left. That's a color switch stitch. And now we turn these last two stitches into red stitches. And we just keep on going until we get to our tree. So our tree is losing a stitch on either side. So we've reached the first stitch of the tree, which means this first one we have to turn it into a red stitch. This will also be your color switch. So crochet in ivory until you have two stitches left. And when you have two stitches left, the first stitch you'll come up 
uh, you come up to. So here we go. This one's going to be our color switch, and this last one we're turning it into a red stitch. There we go. This turns into a red stitch, and then you just crochet until you get to the body of your second reindeer. So remember to repeat your row, or to repeat this, what we have just worked on together, so that you can complete your row. Once you complete your row, it will look like this. So this was part one of our two-part video tutorial. Part two will be available next week, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. That way you will get notified when next week's tutorial posts. If you haven't downloaded your chart yet, go to the online shop. I'm going to link that in the description box below. There you'll be able to find the full pattern for this project, or you can also just get the chart only. So go check that out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, and share it with all your crochet friends. Go check out some more of our crochet work on our Instagram page, and that is at Mode Bespoke. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you all again next week.